Welcome to the background talk for the tutorial on sparse tensor accelerators, where by sparse tensors, we mean multiple dimension arrays, which have some proportion of zeros in them. In this tutorial, we are going to explore the design and model of accelerators intended to speed up computations on these sparse tensors. In, or in alphabetical order, this tutorial has been organized by me, Ankshuman Parashar, Vivian Z, Owen Tsai, and Nell Wu. I'll be giving the first part of this background presentation, and Nell Wu will be giving the second part with more details on the modeling and uh, tools. These talks will be followed by a hands-on session on Saturday, June 19th at noon to 3 p.m. Eastern Time. So why are we interested in sparse tensors and accelerating them? Well, first, there's many problems that actually use sparse tensors. They range from sparse neural networks to internet and social media, which are extremely sparse. So there's a lot of problems that use these kinds of uh, tensors. And why is it interesting? It's interesting because in hardware, there's an opportunity for exploiting that sparsity. First, when data has a lot of zeros in it, that data can often be effectively compressed. That means in hardware that we can save space and energy by avoiding manipulations of zero values. Secondly, there's an opportunity to exploit sparsity mathematically using two quite simple mathematical equalities. The first is that anything times zero is equal to zero. And the sum second is that anything plus zero is equal to that same original anything value. And in hardware, that means that we can possibly save time and energy one, by avoiding fetching unnecessary operands, where if we see a zero as one operand, we don't need to fetch the other one. And avoiding computations, because we know that if we see one zero, we can just know immediately that the result of a multiplication is zero, or the result of an addition is the original value. A little bit of an outline of this talk. We're going to talk about how we specify these tensor computations and a little bit more on the motivation um, for uh, exploiting that sparsity. We're going to talk about a little bit as background, specifying the scheduling of computations when the data is dense. And then we're going to talk about abstracting the representation of tensors, particular tensors that are sparse, so that we can go on to the next step, which is be able to clearly and, and straightforwardly specifying the scheduling of computations on sparse data. Then we're going to present some simple example architectures that exploit sparsity and then deep diving in a little bit deeper. Nelly is going to talk about architectural features uh, for exploiting sparsity, how you specify workloads when the computations are sparse, and then how we can build an analytical model that will that will express and the impact of these sparse optimization features. A little bit more pictorially, an outline of what we're going to do is we're going to be considering um, this time loop version 2 tool, which is a tool that is for sparse computation, going to be able to generate an estimate of the number of cycles that will be consumed by the computation and also be able to generate the amount of energy that that computation will consume. So, so the talk is going to go through a specification of the different inputs we need for this tool. And so first, we're going to talk about specifying the workload that we want. What is the tensor computation? What are the attributes of the data that's going to be computed on? The second is what we would call the mapping. And the mapping is a way of specifying the schedule of all computations, both in space and time. And that is either something that's going to be provided directly by the user, or it might be provided um, as a part of a search for an optimal mapping 
of a computation onto an accelerator. Uh, we then have to actually talk about the specific design of the accelerator. How, are, how does data flow in it? What is the, the network connections? And what that is going to allow us to do is decide whether actually the mapping is, is legal. Because the mapping is going to say, this is the order of computations that we want to do, and this is where we want to do them. The architecture is, has got to be able to support that. So another output of the tool is in is the mapping valid. And in this tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to look at specific details of the optimizations in a accelerator architecture that are going to be used to exploit sparsity. So we're going to talk about how to specify those attributes.